Hello, Insomniacs, and welcome back to another episode of Hello, Insomnia. I will be your host yet again. My name is Steven, and with me today is the lovely Christy. Hey, everyone. The awesome Galen. Hey, how's it going? And finally back from his trip, uh, Mr. Jerry. Hey, everybody. He's Dr. Nick. All right. Oh, is that uh, him? <laughs> <laughs> I, know, uh, I just had that voice stuck in my head. For <laughs> yeah. From The Simpsons, man. It's great. All right. Uh, today, did it. Yeah. Today, we're actually going to pick up uh, on our part two of The Changeling. Uh, we're going to get more in depth on the... It's an actual uh, solved crime, um, which is a little unusual for us, but uh, his story was very um, intense that I wanted to cover it. Uh, so today, for our first solved crime, we're going to do the case of Bridget Cleary, or I should say the murder of Bridget Cleary. So uh, this is to continue from our Changeling episode, which if you haven't heard, uh, please go back and listen to it. It's very good. Started off with a little uh, little nursery rhyme thing here. Are you a witch or are you a fairy? Or are you the wife of Michael Clary? That was a jump rope rhyme that was made uh, basically talking about this story. Um, like all, uh, all, like all like old nursery rhymes are just like based off like very morbid stuff like yes yeah. like ring around a rosy is about mm-hmm. the burning of the bodies and the ashes falling down on you and let's dance on them that yeah is, i was like yeah. this is terrible why are we singing this as like six-year-olds yeah humanity is a little morbid it's all <laughs> gallows humor goes all the way back to you know your childhood and that's uh that's it's the not rhyme that is equated with this story so we're gonna uh, we're gonna just jump right back into it. So here's a little bit of the history of uh, Bridget Bolin. Uh, she was born she was born Bridget Bolin in 1869 in God I do this every time. Uh, Bella Valia, Ireland. I really hope I said that right. I probably butchered it. Uh, so please again forgive me, Ireland. Uh, in the county of uh, Tip Tipperary. I want to say it's Balivadelia. Balivadelia. Uh, it could be. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> um, she was. She married Michael Cleary in August 1887. Uh, the couple met in Con, uh, Clonmill in August 1887. It's a great year. Where, where, yeah, where Michael worked as a cooper. Now, uh, a cooper is a person that is trained to make uh, like wooden casts or barrels um, for like, you know, whiskey and just storage and stuff like that. So a lot, a lot of trading stuff that you use. A cooper coffins? To make um, Can I, I make coffins? Any, anything like woodworking type? <laughs> um, yeah, but I think it's Wood specifically like for the most part, like barrels uh, and casts. Mm. But I mean, I would imagine... A person handy with like wood carving tools can probably make a yeah, coffin. Just hanging with Mister Cooper here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if only he was a good guy like Mister Cooper. But, uh, oh, this guy, well, he's got a rhyme for jump rope. He's got to be a great guy. Who wouldn't oh. want to be his wife? Oh, oh you might regret those. Uh, <laughs> those words. I don't like where that's going. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Michael worked as a Cooper, and, and Bridget served as a dressmaker's apprentice. Um. After their marriage, Bridget returned to her home hometown of oh God, Bella Villa, uh, to live with her parents. So Michael stayed. Uh, he Michael continued to work as a cooper in, in Clonmill, where she where they met. But she went to go live with her parents back in her where she was born. Um, during this period of uh, living apart, Bridget's independence grew. 
she became somewhat of an entrepreneur. Um, she began working with working and tending a flock of chickens, uh, all while selling the eggs in the, to the neighborhood, um, to her neighbors. And so, which is uh, a little uncommon for the times, like uh, a businesswoman, you know, is kind of like unheard of in this. So she was that money. She was a trendsetter. She definitely um, like made her own dresses. She also made hats, which I didn't write down. Oh, that's Um, cool. But she made hats and dresses and sold eggs for money. A successful woman. I can see where this is going. yeah, a very yeah, successful right? woman. Can't do better <laughs> than me. I like it. Let's go. Acquire that currency. Yeah. So um <laughs> Bridget, uh Bridget and Michael never had any children, which uh seemed a little odd. Um for, uh, seemed a little odd to the townsfolk. And since since Michael still worked in Clonmill and throughout the week, he would often visit Bridget on the weekends. So they weren't really together a lot um they like only basically since he was working out of town he'd come back visit they would be together and supposedly you know it was a happy good marriage type of thing but it was very odd considering most marriages you're with your wife uh most of the time yeah you know taking care of each other that type of stuff so the the townspeople will would gossip and things like that. Um, it was rumors would soon spread around town, implying that she was secretly seeing her neighbor, a man by the name of William Simpson, um, who was a unpopular 24 year old man who was married with two children of his Ooh, own. A little love triangle, huh? Oh, so I like how so, they put unpopular. He's <laughs> a loser. What? But he got married so heck? popular. God, to two, get day, <laughs> two doors down, yeah. That, that yeah. Williamson, he's he's a loser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I think it, I think it's just because like the town didn't care for him. I don't know like what why or what he did. I think he was just people just didn't like him. Young kid cheating on his wife, supposedly. Didn't like yeah. him. Didn't like Bridget's success as an entrepreneur. Ex- I don't like yeah. where this is going. Exactly. Yeah. So, mm. so recipe, definitely recipe of disaster. Again, we talked about this in the other episode. You know, when when people are just a little bit different, um, people are either afraid of them or weary of them or talk shit about them. That's kind of like or claim they're a witch, claim or they're claim their witch, change change the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so so just hold yes. that thought that's that's something that's uh gonna come into play here um so yeah side note yeah these rumors were all speculation that made michael uh or there was speculation that michael was jealous of bridget's success as a businesswoman which i mean we kind of hinted on um which because it wasn't very common for the era and the location in the world so again, he's a little bit jealous because she's she's making money selling them eggs, selling mm-hmm. the dresses and the hats and stuff. Like people would go to her because she was known to be able to to accomplish the hats and dress making. That's and then tight. if they obviously want food, she's got the chickens. She's selling she got them it eggs. all. She's doing yeah. it all. And she, she, only needs her, she only needs her husband like two days a week. Like let's go right? budget. <laughs> Independent as fuck. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, it's nowadays like, she would be known as the plug in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. oh. hey, yo, I got the eggs. I got what the What you need? Let's go. What you need? Yeah, you mean? <laughs> so yeah, so there there was a lot of that, and then I saw some reports. I didn't jot it down, but like some said, she was a, uh, a fairly attractive woman, so she did get like the attention of other men in the town and stuff like that, um, which probably would have added to the jealousy and stuff and and things like that, that Michael was feeling again, speculation. Uh, I saw it on different reports, so it wasn't really like confirmed that this was happening. It was a lot of just like, you know, some reports will say this happened. Some didn't. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, sometime in their, you know, eight years of marriage, cause they've, they've been married for a while now. Uh, Bridges mother ends up passing away. And the Clearies found themselves like having to be responsible to take care of Bridges' father, uh, an elderly man named Patrick Bolin. And uh, since since they basically became the caretakers of Patrick, he uh, he became eligible to secure a new type of house that they were building in the community, which were these like um, newly type like 
furnished type houses like instead of you know the clay and stones and stuff it was actually it actually looks like um they're kind of made out of like cement and wood and stuff like that like a common day house so it wasn't like a, a sh uh, like a ramshackle shack and stuff it actually looked really nice and i put a picture in your guys's notes if you oh, wanted to take a yeah, look yeah that's crazy so um, it was like it was see. like they were up it was like the new upcoming type of house yeah kind of like yeah the, so we're we're kind of upgrading here yeah like if you saw this house you'd be like oh shit this person's got a mansion because these are these it are the nicer crazy. houses yeah um but patrick was eligible to get these because he they were they were available to only laborers and since Patrick uh, Bolin used to be a laborer in his youth, um, he he basically w had access to this house. He got priority over others. Yeah, and he so he wanted to get the house for for his daughter and Michael, and so they they ended up uh, um, basically moving in. And then and Patrick was going to move in at them. Now there's there's some reports that Bridget's mother may have died. Uh, before um, the father got the house, but again, it was kind of conflicting. So I don't really know whether like they got the house before she passed or after, but needless to say, the more important thing is that Patrick moved in with them into this new home. Um, so, yeah. So, um, so besides being, having to be a laborer to secure the new house, um, a lot of people in the village didn't really they weren't interested in the house because it was built on the site of a supposed fairy fort, a ring oh. fort. Um, now, in uh, what? Irish, uh, a fairy ring fort. Like a she? Like the, so, uh, the fairy mound or whatever? Yes. Uh, so in Irish folklore, it is believed that a fairy oh, ring yes. okay, or, okay. or uh, fairy ring forts are a mystical place protected by the spells of druids. Um, so like druid magic and stuff like that. The spells of druids yeah, and they were yeah. homes uh of the fairies so in these these fairy rings these forts there's a lot of um it's like those rocks that's like placed in a circle right yes yeah. so you have like the the walls that are like circled um rocks either like it's built on like a, a mound like uh, galen was saying or but you can noticeably tell the the rings now in, in like folklore that we that I didn't cover in the changeling episode is like you're not supposed to um like pass through these things or go near them because it's it's considered bad luck like people thought if you disturb them it would bring bad luck or something bad would happen to them so you know they wouldn't they wouldn't go near them they wouldn't want to touch them um but they it didn't stop the clearies from moving into this new house so you know they kind of just brushed off the the whole uh, supernatural element or the the fairy element and they were like well this is a sweet home let's move in and they did um <clears throat> so with, with that though uh let's kind of start getting into the uh, events that led up to the murder um oh damn okay. just, to, just to jump right into it but that's that's kind of a little bit of the history of like where the story is taking place um where and it's in the the county of tipiary um, so it kind of gives you an idea of like what, what we're dealing with here, but the house was built in the mound, like around the mound. That's so creepy. It's like a uh, poltergeist stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how you guys would feel about that. Um, if you would move into like one of the nicest homes built on there, I mean, I probably would cause it's a sweet house for the time. I'm just saying this. If I move <laughs> into like, if I'm in an area and there's a hell of a nice house, but no one wants to live into it, I'm going to ask questions before I move in. Of course. If I don't believe in Irish lore, it shouldn't affect me. Right. They'll be like, hey, oh. today, today, today. Oh God. We're going <laughs> to so lose let, all let the fairies. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, Sorry to our Irish listeners. Yeah. It's okay. You get a pass. <laughs> oh, my God. You get a pass. All right. Straight from the Irish blood. Don't abuse it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So on, on Monday, the uh, March 4th in 1895, Bridget started her day like she did any other day, any other Monday. As uh, she prepared for one of her egg deliveries, for her father's cousin, a man by the name of Jack Dunn. Um, on, on the way to Jack's house, 
she had to pass by one of these ring forts, one of these fairy rings, which, uh, she, um, she was, they fascinated her. She, uh, she actually liked them. Um, she didn't like dislike them or she wasn't afraid of them. And it was said that supposedly she would, she would leave small offerings for the fairies and things like that, just because she found them fascinating. Again, that could be some speculation. Um, I've seen that in a couple different articles. What would, what would she like leave? It probably likes eggs or like flowers, things like uh, okay. that. Just just offerings, just to kind of pay respects. Gotcha. That's that's what I interpreted it as. A shot of Irish whiskey. I mean, maybe <laughs> she had coffee. it on hand. Uh, Some Jameson. Cherry. <laughs> 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 upon, <laughs> upon arrival at Jack's house, uh, she she found out that he wasn't there. And so she decided to wait for him in the cold. So uh, uh, some more backstory, like this in 1895, I guess it was uh, recorded to be one of the coldest winters. So leading up into like the end of February and like all the snow is kind of like starting to melt, but it's still, it's still pretty cold in come March and uh, like wet and damp and stuff like that. So she, she was waiting out in the cold for Jack Dunn and he's he's not there he's not showing up um jack uh, unfortunately never showed up and after getting colder and colder by the minute bridget decided to you know walk back walk the mile and a half back to her house um where she uh, when she got home she you know got by the fire tried to warm up but she still felt cold and sick cuz she's been out there for you know hours like just waiting for this guy, Jack, uh, to deliver the eggs and everything. And uh, by the time, by the time Michael arrived back to, from work and got home, um, she told him she didn't feel, uh, feel very good. And she went to bed. Uh, Bridget, Bridget fell ill and uh, she got very sick, like, like fast. So I'm assuming hypothermia it led to, some other ailments probably caught a cold or something. COVID four, maybe if that was a thing. <laughs> no, OG, COVID, let's go. <laughs> An OG Irish yeah, COVID, yeah. yeah, number four, you know, number four. So, so like after about a like a, a week of her feeling sick, Michael and um, after about a week, both Patrick and Michael had made separate trips to the nearest town. Um, just days after each other. So one day Michael went or uh, Patrick went, her father, uh, tried to summon the local doctor. No luck. Basically couldn't find the doctor. Couldn't get the doctor to show up. Patrick makes this journey back home, which was like, I, I think I read like 30 miles away. So you got to think they're going to this far to find the nearest doctor, bring him back or, or whatever. And just to get him to come see her. The doctor didn't show up the next day or like a couple of days after it was like really frequent. Michael was like, you know, screw this. I'm going, I need to, you know, take care of my wife. He goes to find the local doctor, the doctor, he, the doc, he finds the doctor. The doctor is like, he'll come to see Bridget. Um, when, you know, when he, as soon as he can, that type of thing, Michael comes back and more than a week into her illness. So you gotta remember she got sick. March 4th, right? On March 13th, 1995, the physician finally... 1895. Or, excuse me, yeah, 1895. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This, this happened like 30 years ago. Uh, Time travel the, is real now. Whoa. The, the physician finally visits Bridget in her home. The doctor, the doctor told Michael that he thinks she has bronchitis, and he like prescribed her some medicine. Like get this medicine, it should help. But by this time, Bridget's she's very sick. Like she's not getting out of bed. She's you know, kind of staying bedridden, not doing much, barely eating. Like you know, normal stuff of like when you have bronchitis or a common cold type yeah, type you're shit. Just coughing a lot. Yeah. Man. So Bridget's condition soon worsened, and word spread uh, that Bridget was very sick. And many people went to go visit her and just kind of like, you know, see how she's doing, check up on her. Um, even it was reported that even a priest, 
came to perform her last rites. Like she was looking pretty bad. Um, Michael grew impatient and like nothing seemed to be working, you know, trying to get the medicine for the doctor didn't seem like it was, it was working. Um, so it, by this time, um, uh, and I forgot to mention that when he went to go get the medicine for Bridget, he ran into Jack Dunn and uh, Jack Dunn was, um, you know, he, he's, he promised to go see Bridget, but as he was visiting Bridget, um, he kind of like convinced Jack or convinced Michael that, you know, something's not right about her. Um, you might, you might want to go see a, a, a fairy doctor. And he kind of came to this conclusion because while they were visiting, like other people were visiting, like Bridget would tell, tell other people, cause she was still like able to speak and stuff. Like she would talk, she told, I believe it was like her cousin. And I don't know the cousin's name. I didn't write it down, but uh, like that she kind of got sick after passing that fairy hill. And, um, the fairy doctor, if you guys uh, remember from our last episode, is you know like an an elder woman, usually a female, um, who's prescribed kinda poison, pres- prescribed <laughs> yeah. different type of cures and el- for ailments and stuff of like supernatural and fairies, it's like a witch doctor, basically exactly like a witch doctor. So this guy Jack Dunn convinces Michael, um, and I, after talking to some visitors, that Bridget wasn't herself. And she, maybe you should try, you know, visiting this fairy doctor. Uh, Michael at this point is starting to convince himself after talking to Jack Dunn, who's a very superstitious man that maybe, maybe she is starting to become a changeling. Like maybe this isn't Bridget. She's no longer herself. And so he goes to the fairy doctor, the, Fairy doctor prescribes uh, Bridget nine special herbs, which probably included the foxglove and some other harmful mm, shit. That's like the secret recipe for KFC's chicken, right? Yeah. The nine special herbs <laughs> and spices. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Delicious. S and P's for me. But these herbs may be harmful uh, to some humans. Um, <laughs> Just a couple of people. So is KFC. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> enough, Jerry. Fair enough. <laughs> So the nine, the nine special herbs and a mix uh, and to mix them with the milk of a cow who's just given birth. So a new, uh, basically a new mother cow um, and to mix them. And this concoction should, uh, is a way to get rid of the fairies. So Michael and his delus- delusional mind gathered the milk, gathered the herbs, mixed them all together and started forcing Bridget to drink them to drink it. Um, Even though she didn't like the taste of the mixture. I mean, who would when you're using like poisonous plants and shit like that, but he would, he was forcing, he, this is where like his anger started to come out. He started forcing her to drink this mixture and, and she, you know, she didn't like it. (sighs) Several home remedies and superstitions, um, superstitious rituals were administered. So like, Michael's just straight up jumping into the uh, to crazy town and trying to try these different um, rituals. Um, her fa- her father and her husband uh, would accuse accuse Bridget of being a fairy the entire time. They would scream at Bridget, trying to get the the fairy to reveal itself by revealing its name or age, like we talked about in the previous episode. Um, so basically emotionally battering this woman and screaming at her. Um, she was doused in, in urine. Um, so the, you know, imagine that you're just getting screamed at by your father and your husband, because by this point, everybody's convinced, Why everybody's convinced urine? that she's not who sh- she says she is. Gross. They think she's changed. Them. So they're dousing her. Imagine getting urine thrown in your face while people are screaming at you. How you like that, fairy? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Take some of this. The fuck? (laughs) They started burning her with hot pokers and and burning pieces of wood from the fireplace. Because 
another thing we forgot to go over in that other one is like that's a way to get rid of them. Hot pokers and fire. Fire scares fairies don't fairies. like hot, right? Yeah. So <laughs> humans don't either. It makes it makes them uncomfortable. <laughs> makes me uncomfortable, but oh man, I mean anybody I think would fire burning your skin and stuff. So they started they started torturing her. Yeah, what? So imagine that like just you know, they've been torturing her. No, no. But like 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 physically. So like Let's before it's like it emotionally Damn. and mentally abuse, which is still abuse. Don't I don't want to take that away. Like that yeah. is abuse. But they the abuse started to change. They're starting to like poker with these hot iron, you know, uh fire pokers and like threatening her to like hit her with burning pieces of wood. I mean, not necessarily her, because at this point they're all thinking she's a changeling. She's she's one of the fairy folk. And and like, could you imagine getting burned and then urine dumped on you? Like, that's got to lead to some type of infection or something. You know what I mean? Who knows? Like, I I didn't see a report saying it was human urine or, like, the cow's urine. You know what I mean? But either way, it's disgusting. So, uh, continuously forcing her to drink this milk and herb concoction, which can't be very good for her. Um, they dragged her out of bed, dangerously close to the fire pit, the fireplace. So all this to say, you know, these are the type of things that was happening to her, um, growing frustrated with the, the very sick and very tortured Bridget. Michael tried to, he tried to, he tried to feed his wife the concoction one last time. Uh, Bridget pleaded with Michael and Michael, like in a menacing way, threw her to the ground near the fireplace um at this point i'm not i'm not too sure if it's confirmed um just as a side note but the in some reports it said that bridget hit her head um when she hit the ground which she may or may not have been unconscious for this next part um uh she may have died from it but again it's kind of not um 100 confirmed so just take it with a grain of salt. So during the fall, uh, Bridget's uh, Charmise, which is a, I think, I, pr- I hope I'm saying that. Chemise is, uh, it's a one piece uh, woman's undergarment. Um, like some type of like nightgown, I'm assuming. Hmm. But it caught fire. And uh, it started, it started to burn her. Oh, like it wasn't, like fully spread, but it was, it was a blaze. Like it, it started, uh, Michael in his, his delusional rage, um, was yelling at Bridget, you know, asking her like, who are you? Are you the wife of Michael Cleary? Um, are you a changeling? You know, that type of stuff. And just yelling at her, um, due to, due to Bridget's, um, possible unconsciousness or just, you know, not responding, you know, saying I'm your wife, I'm your wife and pleading to Michael in a rage. He threw a, a, a kerosene lamp onto Bridget, uh, basically burning her to death is what is assumed. Holy shit. Um, so remember this, this started on Damn the 4th. Blood. It is now March 16th. Um, rumors were beginning to circulate that. Oh, just just to go back a little bit. There are people in this house while this is going down. Like there's guests. What? There <laughs> They're are just people standing there? in and out. Yeah. So the father, the um, Patrick. They're just um, watching. Some of her family members and friends are in the house. Like they're in the house. They're so whether that you know they're in the Do living room know? and in the or is she like in a basement? There, like, no, no, she's in the bedroom. She's in she's in the bedroom next to basically the living room. If if you want to just like monetize it, like I don't know if it was just an open room, mm-hmm. but she's in the bedroom. People are in the living room and in and out of the room trying to you know all do these rituals to try to bring because like. They say that um, Michael could have been affected by, uh, oh, damn it. What is it called? It's like a disorder where the mass hysteria will go to other people as well. What so the they, they think 
that he this may have it like infected the other people to like going with going along with all this torture and like not say anything or in, intervene. Jeez. So there was people in the house um, when when this stuff was going down. So March sixteenth, rumors began to circulate that Bridget was missing, um, and the local police began searching for her. Michael was quoted as claiming that his wife had been taken by fairies. So he's going around town telling people that his wife was taken by fairies and all this stuff. And he was, uh, he appeared to be holding a vigil um, at his house. Witnesses uh, statements were gathered over the ensuing week. And by the time they found Bridges burnt corpse, um, it was in a shallow grave uh, and they found it March 22nd. So from the 4th to the 16th, you you know, Bridget was supposedly alive because the 16th, they said that, you know, they were having a visual uh, and, you know, she was just missing. And on the 22nd, they finally, the constables or police officers, I'm not really sure. I think it's constables in Ireland, um, found a shallow grave with her burnt corpse. Uh, nine people, uh, nine people were being charged in her disappearance, including her husband. And in a coroner's inquest, um, came back the next day after they found the body, and the verdict was death by burning. So they they concluded that she had died by burning. Jeez, that's so crazy! What? Yeah. The heck? Uh, so that's that torture. Went on for that long, um, her being missing, her body being missing with these people that knew the truth went on for days at a time. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there, there was some reports that, um, the fairy doctor had told Michael that he had a certain amount of time to get Bridget back by like midnight on like the ninth day of her being sick or quote unquote possessed or whatever. But I, there was conflicting things. Like I saw it on some reports and some I didn't. So I kind of left it out, but that's also another thing. That's interesting. So there's like a time limit. Yeah. So like, that's why it was kind of like rushed, like the, the vigils and things like that. But anyway, I got, I got some trial stuff for the outcome. Uh, legal hearings ran from the first to the 6th of April, 1895. Um, a 10th person had been charged and uh, one of the original nine was discharged uh, at this stage, leaving nine defendants bound over the trial. The court sessions began on the 3rd of July and the grand jury indicted five of the defendants for murder. Michael Cleary, Patrick Bolin, Mary Kennedy, James Kennedy, Patrick Kennedy, and nine uh, all nine were indicted on charges of wounding, um, which I didn't get the definition of wounding, but I think that's like, um, like ca causing, is it malice of forethought or maiming stuff like that? It's, it's, it has to do with like hurting a person basically. Mayhem. It, may, it might be mayhem. That, that may be right. Um, so the case proceeded to go to trial. Um, evidence was shown that on March 15th, just to go back, Michael had summoned uh, the father, Father Ryan, which was the priest that gave uh, Bridget Cleary her last rites, back to the Cleary household. Uh, Ryan found that Bridget was alive, but agitated. Um, and Michael had told the priest that he had not been giving his wife the medicine prescribed by the doctor the whole time. And because he had no faith in it. Wow. So this son bitch was told by a doctor to get this medicine and he refused to give it to her. No, nah, I'm going to do this fairy doctor. Yeah. So. I'm going to just go with this fairy doctor because my superstitions are telling me otherwise. Fairy doctor knows what's up. Yeah. Uh, according to Ryan, the, the pastor or the priest, um, Clary then said the, uh, People may have some remedies of their own that might do more good than the doctor's medicine. So hinting at the fairy doctor stuff or something to that effect. 
um, Bridget was given communion and Ryan departed. So, you know, because I, I believe it, it's assumed by now that Bridget was either Catholic or Christian. Um, so he did the last rites and stuff because at this point, the, the priest thinks that she's going to pass from her illness and not torture because he doesn't really know what's going on. Um, so the witnesses were unclear as to whether or not uh, she was dead when she was thrown to the floor and, and possibly hit her head. Michael kept the others back um, while the body was burning. So, so imagine that. So when, when she was thrown to the ground and possibly hit her head, the witnesses weren't, weren't sure that she was dead or not, but then he throws the fire on her. She's burning. They don't know if she was dead beforehand or after, after the fact. So just to kind of clear that up. A little gotcha. Bit. Um, so yeah, but Michael kept them back from either putting the fire outs or just helping her, um, insisting that she was a changeling and she had been a changeling for, for a week previously and that this would get, this was the only way to get his wife back from the fairies was to kill this one. Um, AKA talking about Bridget and that his wife would magically just come waltzing back to him. Like that was his belief. He was so hardcore into believing that by killing this one or since no other method worked, once she died, the, her, her actual self would come back from the fairy circles. What? Jeez. So as part of the trial, uh, the jury was actually led out to the storage building where Bridget's body had been held for burial. Um, so it's where they stashed her before they could bury the body. And where, um, where it was available for viewing. So they actually saw the body, the jury. Brought in the body and um, everything. The jury was given the oppor uh, opportunity to see the condition of the body and the extent of her injuries as well. As a personal uh, verify that the body was indeed Bridget by looking upon her face. What the jury witnessed was outbuilding, co outbuilding convinced convinced them that the horrible sufferings Bridget had endured prior to death. So them seeing how her body was, you know, it was easy for them to like come to a conclusion. Like this is what she endured um, prior to death. The, I, I think they went to go see where they recovered the body as well as, you know, the body itself charges against one of the co-defendants, uh, William, a heart, uh, Hearn, a Hearn. I think that's how you pronounce it. Were dropped. He was somebody that was in and out of the house and three others was also dropped. So like they were probably there like witnesses, but they weren't, um, they didn't participate in any of the torture. It's like, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Which, which is a little weird. I don't know if they actually seen the, the burning go down or anything like that. But I would like to think if they did and they didn't like say they anything, they're just as guilty. There's nine people in that house. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, so these people were, were basically let go uh, with no charges. They were deemed, uh, free of any any crime that's terrible yeah they could have helped her at any yeah, point I, time at this time it's, it's, it seems like it's a lot of hearsay like oh uh you know these people were all in the building they all saw this you know that type of thing but these the i don't know who the other three were but this william hearn guy or here and he was he was noted so i added him on here um as for john dunn michael kennedy william kennedy um they were convicted of wounding because I believe these guys were the ones that would hold Bridget down. Uh, John Dunn was the one that convinced Michael, uh, Michael Cleary to like go see the fairy doctor. And, and he participated in the rituals because he was, he was a superstitious dude. Okay. I just looked up. I just looked up what wounding is out of curiosity. It, it says, uh, inflicting grievous bodily harm to a person hmm. and it's mostly in a the uk thing mm. and the european that's that's their like law okay we do we have something equivalent to that in in the states uh, 
Mm. Is it mayhem? Would that be? I, th- I think it might be mayhem. Okay, yeah, because I know I know there is something for that. I just don't know at the top of my head. Uh, so th- apparently, this whole Kennedy family was very highly involved. I think I can't remember if they were friends or family. Like they could have been cousins to to the Miss uh, Miss Cleary, which actually I'm gonna go ahead and just refer to her as Miss. Uh, Bridget Bolin, because that's her maiden name. Um, or the fairy. Yeah. The fairy. But uh, John, yeah, so John Dunn, all them. Uh, Patrick Kennedy was sentenced to five years in uh, penal servitude. So yeah. he he went to jail. Michael Kennedy was sentenced to six months of hard labor. So Six months? Yeah. Uh, James Kennedy was sentenced to 18 months of hard labor. William Kennedy was sentenced to 18 months of hard labor. Mary Kennedy was released owing to her age and frailty. So I think she was young. She must have been like, we'll just say for the the sake of the story, under 18, if that makes sense. Um, Patrick Bolin, the father of Bridget, was sentenced to six months of hard labor. John Dunn. Uh, the guy who basically started all this bullshit and convinced Michael was sentenced to three years in a penal servitude. Um, Michael Cleary, uh, the husband of the year, was uh, found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to 20 years of penal servitude he spent only 15 years in prison. Uh, he was released from Maryboro, uh, which is now Port Lousy. I don't know how to say that. Anybody want to give that a try? Port. Port Lois. Port. Port Lois. Port Lois prison. Port-a-lois. Yeah. He was released in Port Lois prison or from Port Lois prison. Um, uh, April 28th, 19, 19- um, so remember, all this took place 1895. He gets out 15 years later, 1910, um, where it's reported that he moved to the English, uh, English city of Liverpool. And then from there, he immigrated to Canada of July of the same year. Mm, that's crazy. I feel like that time did not fit the crime. <laughs> Yeah, like it should have been way that's more. It. That's all. She, that's all her life was worth. Yeah. That's so she, fucking dumb. She was, she was like twenty five or twenty six years old. She wasn't very old. Um, I I believe Michael Cleary was only like he was like nine years older than her, but still. So you got to think, Michael's in his thirties, right? Yeah, just about. He spends fifteen years. He comes back. He's still got a whole life ahead of him where Bridget is dead now and Mm -hmm. her, you know, let's say she's 26. That's not even a long time to be alive, let alone the way she died. um, Yeah. Was just disturbing in so many ways. You know what I mean? The constant, Mm -hmm. the constant emotional abuse that she suffered with him constantly calling her a a fairy and trying to get her to admit it, which, you know, even if you're innocent, you can't admit, like, if you try to admit it, like, I'm, no, I'm who I say I am. They're not going to believe you. They're just going to nope. keep up the batter. The burning, the torturing, dousing in urine, which is so disturbing. Yeah, dude. It's just so fucked. Like, this poor woman who was ahead of her time, I'm going to go ahead and say, because she's the entrepreneur, very successful. Yeah, ran her own business, didn't need the husband. <sighs> She was taken uh, far too soon, and it seems like all these, all this whole Kennedy family that was there, for them only to get, you know, maybe a little over a year, a, a little less, you know. Hard labor. Just hard labor? Like, you're just working, but you were there, you said nothing, you did nothing when this woman was murdered? It's complete and utter bullshit. It straight up is. I can't believe that. It's just crazy to me, and it's like... 
they held her for so long and did all this stuff to her and then this fool's just walking out 15 years later like la di da di da yeah yeah um just complete and utter bullshit uh i i feel like even though michael went to jail for 15 years some of these other, like my john dunn should have been in prison for longer than three years Hell the yeah. father patrick bolin he was participating in the torture like i know it's her father but <clears throat> dude you killed your daughter you helped kill your daughter yeah like you deserve to go for longer than hard labor for six months yeah that's insanity i can't believe that this is just my mind can't wrap around it yeah it's 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 very difficult like and this is why i wanted to touch on this story specifically because it, it's it's baffling that people she knew didn't step in her own father you know what i mean didn't step in and it's not like bridget was hated amongst the town you know what i mean that belonged to oh william william whatever his name is uh he was disliked in the town, but like nobody said anything. Nobody really was just cool. And then finally, when they finally decided to file a missing persons report, she had already been dead for over like five days. And then they found her body the seventh day after that. You know what I mean? Like on the 22nd. Imagine if they didn't even get caught for that. How fucked that would be. Yeah. Like, like whether or not the, the doctor's medicine would have worked and, you know, brought her back. Cause she was, she was very sick. Like even if it didn't, and she had passed away that way, like the outcome would have been the same, but you wouldn't have been torturing this woman, her final days. And, and maybe she could have came back. Maybe the medicine would that the doctor prescribed, but you went to, you know, a witch doctor, a, a fairy doctor. Cause he was superstitious. Because of superstition. It's hella fucking true. I mean, look at witches. Superstitions look at all the fucked up yeah, shit. True. It is true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you have stuff like that. You have the witch hunts. You have the murdering of, of, of wolves because people believed in werewolves. The digging up of bodies because people believed in vampires. You know what I mean? Like this stuff all happened in history. And it's just, it's astonishing how much... Uh, humans in general will believe things like this and and then not not like believing in it is fine if as long as you don't take it a step further and commit crimes based off these beliefs like like if you believe in fairies that's fine you know whatever that, that's you're right you can do that when you start murdering people because you believe they're a fairy that's when you have issues yeah and it, honestly it's just like it makes me think because I used to when the Ren Fair was still open before like COVID and all this, when I go there, I'd like go to the Ren Fair, you know, with my girlfriend and we'd go see those little like fairy caves. And at first, like I'm like, yeah, these are awesome. These are beautiful. But now I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, my God, that's so like it has like a How way different meaning because of it. Yeah. 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 Way different like, meaning now. Like, dude, not supposed to pass it. They they would have they would have burned everybody. You know, I mean, they would have killed everybody that's even interacted with those fairy rings or or just fairies in general. Anybody they believed had fairy uh, connection would have been would have been done. <sighs> yeah, but, I just think of that, Ryan, that you said at the beginning. Are you a witch or are you a fairy? Because it doesn't matter. They're going to burn you all the same. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but that oh, is oh, the dude. story. The unfortunate murder of. Bridget Cleary, guys. Damn. All right. So, oh, man, I, that one's a tough one, man. Yeah, it is. That one's a tough one. Um, Definitely a tough story. God. I can't believe it. And that's all like documented too. Yeah. Right? No. Oh yeah. This is, this case is well oh, documented. Yeah. I mean, I was able to pull up pictures, which hopefully we can probably post on our Instagram. Um, oh, absolutely. Of, of Michael Cleary and, I couldn't really find a good picture of Bridget, but um, I did find something. It's a little blurry, but it works. But yeah, no, it's, it's just it's a horrible way. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, I think I think jealousy played a, a part into it. Like I, oh, I yeah. think I think because she was out there making all the money, getting all the attention. Yeah. he was bitter at home. Like shit, 
because because it was it was reported too like she was a she was the primary breadwinner she was the breadwinner yeah. she was killing it by the sounds of it yeah dude she's killing the game she should have just killed him and but then she's back in the- like damn girl <laughs> yeah like but back in the day it's gonna be like they're gonna look down on like oh michael is just a stay-at-home dad no what well, you know he was he was a cooper he was, he was just in a whole other city yeah he was working in a different city throughout the week and then he would just come come to see her during the weekends so but while all this is going down he never left her side because you know i mean he's taking care of his wife he's trying to be what he thinks is a good husband but in reality he led him down a dark path where he's torturing because he had influences like john dunn who's like convincing like hey that's not your wife this is this is a changeling and then go see this crazy doctor that's going to tell you to give you know poisonous herbs to her probably yeah, making her milk. worse <laughs> and then yeah in milk like and then, ugh, like Fuck. that's just like yeah that that foxglove poisoning was very common with cases like this of of you know give give foxglove which is a poisonous flower jerry to to humans and, and it's just going to make conditions worse but that's what it was that's so crazy. Uh, I mean, you guys have anything else? Like any other questions or anything before we wrap up this episode? I mean, so uh, stay away from Tinkerbell. Yeah. I know this one was going to be more depressing than the last <laughs> one. But, like, great job, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Sorry, yeah, the two, dude. the two back to back, you know, <sighs> depressing no, episodes. Was, but this was great stuff. You did a lot of research, man. That that's some information right there and facts. It's just crazy to think like this is documented stuff, you know. It's like the cases where it's like paranormal activity, but it's like coming from like police and like, you know, the, you know, documents of like hospitals and stuff or peace or C- child protective services where they're like, "Yeah, we witnessed that stuff." And it's just like this is documented fairy like belief like people thinking like oh i need to kill for fairies and stuff or like kill because of fairies like it went to court so there's court documents and things like that like records of it there's there's uh books um other like again like going back to my sources you know i used the like solve murders podcast they did like a i want to say a two-part episode on changelings and bridget cleary as well uh very good information um, a couple of YouTube videos. You had the shrouded hand, the changelings uh, video. I remember there there is like a visual episode on this on um, Lore. Yes. If you ever, have I was that. just about to bring that up. Actually, we might end up watching that. I do recommend that one. It is, um, it is very good. It is acted out. Um, so they basically have this whole like scenario acted out by actors, and then you have the narrator um, for the podcast giving the narrations and stuff too in between. It's a very good episode. Check it out. It's on Amazon Prime, I believe. So, yeah, check that out. That was the story of Bridget Cleary. And uh, with that being said, you know, thank you guys all for joining us for this episode of Hello Insomnia. Um, you know, for myself, Christy, Galen, and Jerry, uh, appreciate you guys being here. And you guys have a wonderful day. Try not to uh, let this keep you up at night. Sleep well. Have a good one. Later.